Scorpio. Scorpio, these are our sun signs born from October 23rd through November 21st. Um, we have got our most intense, uh, some would say intense, uh, possibly secretive, um, deeper uh, expressions of any of the sun signs when we have a Scorpio in our midst. There is a, an undercurrent with Scorp. Um, this is a scorpion. I like to think of this as the, the other traditional symbols applied to Scorpio would be uh, phoenix, the eagle, the snake, because these all have to do with regeneration, death and rebirth. The Scorpio, um, in my mind, has a very strong, dark feminine energy, meaning we were all at one point in time in a womb that would have been a dark, wet place inside of a female, a feminine. Uh, and it's a place that was unconscious that we don't remember. We were expelled from that place through a process that was probably painful, I would imagine, getting your head squeezed or s squeezed? Yeah, squeezed. It's going to say squeezed. Squeezed through the birth canal, right? That cannot be pleasant. Um, and you're this little soft, you know, little thing, and you're helpless. So that's the dark feminine. Now, the mother, our mothers that give us life, also give us death. Because to be born means you will, you're here mortal, mortally, and you will die. So your mother gave you the gift of life and the gift of death. That's the dark feminine. That's Scorpio energy. Scorpio has to do with life and death. All of our big, big, big life lessons come through the life and death processes that we experience as humans. You know, everything from when you leave home to go to kindergarten as a five-year-old, you know, you're, that part of your life dies and this new part is reborn. Um, Scorpio and Pluto. Pluto rules Scorpio and traditionally Mars also rules Scorpio. So I always look at both in the birth chart, placements of both Mars and Pluto to help inform the sun. That's for another video. Um, but these are both strong masculine energies. Mars is, you know, the warrior and it's passion and it's fight and it's aggression. And Pluto is also similar. It's also a, a sort of aggression in that it's like the explosion. It's the, the, the death and rebirth of something through a process that destroys something to give birth to something else. It's almost to me, Pluto's really actually, even though it's traditionally a, a male god, you know, it to me is female. It's the dark feminine. It's the, I mean, Pluto, the god of the underworld, hello, that's, that's about as feminine as you get. So um, anyway, so Scorpio types. I don't want to get in too deep on this. Scorpio types are intense. They have an intensity to them. They and it, in a personality, it comes out through uh, this understanding that the partner it can almost be an ethereal partnership can be this ethereal thing where the partner could just disappear and the partnership dies and they have to be faced with the mourning process of the death of this relationship. So this can make them quite possessive or um, jealous or paranoid or, you know, they'll really pay attention to the things their partner's doing because they're looking for these little signs waiting for the other shoe to drop kind of a deal, right? Um, now, Scorpio also is traditionally thought of as ruling sex. You know, it's like, oh, Scorpios are so sexy. They're sexed up, you know, sex, sex, sex. Um, all of the, any sun sign, I mean, we're human beings. It's one of our uh, primal urges. We have a limbic system, so we desire uh, sexual contact and emotional sexual contact and bonding and this kind of thing with our partners. So, of course, Scorpio does as well. It's how it's approached. So Scorpio, sexuality is a place for Scorpio where many times Scorpio energy is expressed through sexuality because sex is a place where we see uh, a perfect metaphor for life. So I always say eighth house is like this. You've got with, when we're born, you are one with the mother, right? In the womb. And then you're born, doo -doo -doo, and then you got the mom and you got you. The individual, you, you take your first breath when you separate from the mother and you become a duality. It's you and the mother, right? And then you have life, death, life, death, that rhythm, and then you die one day and are buried, cremated, whatever, okay? Your spirit ascends and goes elsewhere in my mind. Now, with sex, you have, instead of having the one, you have the two come together to make the one. So you've got the duality coming together to make the singular, the unity, the one. Um, and in this process, you have two people come together, they kiss, they share the breath of life with one another. Just like when you are born, you should have to take that first breath alone. Sexuality is about coming back together to the oneness and sharing it with another person. That's Scorpio. That's eighth house. Eighth house is all about sharing these intense 
bonds and contracts we have with other people. And this includes in business. That's why Eighth House has to do with like loans and, uh, you know, money, child support, you know, it's agreements and contracts that have been made that involve the exchange of resources. A high functioning scorp, you've got someone who is focused, driven, determined. Uh, there is a strong, uh, that, again, that Martian energy, that which is quite masculine, it's the masculine energy, um, combined with the Plutonian energy, which is this ability to transform situations. They can see the psychological underpinnings in relationships between people, like in business. They can see patterns. They can know. They just and they have a very strong intuition where they just kind of know the way and the direction things are going to run. So they um, stick with that. But they're also um, they're good at keeping secrets and they're good at keeping confidences with other humans. Um, and they'll use that many times. I mean, they they understand psychology. So they're they're. They're good, they're good, we'll talk about this in a second, they can be manipulative, is what I'm trying to say. But um, they really desire, what they desire is intimacy with their partner, they desire closeness, they desire that bond that is unbreakable, like a to the death bond, that's what they really want. So they can be kind of intense, um, and they can focus all of their energy on one person, that's quite Scorp. Um, a lot of times Scorpios, they'll be in situations with unrequited love, um, because when they fall in love, they really fall in love, and they're sort of stuck there. Um, until someone else, I suppose, comes along, but they'll still harbor that, okay? So, and also they're very sensually expressive. They are, they are good lovers. I mean, they are comfortable going places that are quite kinky that other people maybe aren't comfortable going into. Uh, again, look at their moon and look at their Venus. That's going to tell you emotionally if how they feel about that. But because a Scorpio is interested, as most water signs are, they're interested in pleasing the partner, you know, um, they'll roll as they say. Low functioning Scorpio. Traditionally, Scorpios are known as being jealous. You know, it's always, oh, Scorps are jealous, they're possessive, they're, you know, yada, yada, yada. Yes, they are. Um, but let's talk about why they are. Like we said earlier, um, Scorpio is dealing with this deep understanding, this deep um, sort of unconscious knowing that um, once something's been born, including a relationship, it will one day die. Knowing this on a really deep level, um, they carry that with them. So in relationships, many times, that is um, what drives or can fuel, perhaps, jealousy or worry. It's more of a worry, I feel like, and then it turns into jealousy and it turns into, like, anger. Because it starts as a knowing, moves to a worry. So it starts in a here feeling, moves up into the brain, they're knowing something, and then it comes back down to here, knowing it and worrying. They'll worry, ruminate about it, and then it comes back down to here, and then they're mad, they're angry. And that's when you see jealousy, okay? Um, because Scorps are pattern watchers, they're noticing, they notice, 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 and they don't even know they're noticing because they're ninjas, like they're ninja noticers, and, and then it will come out later in a, an eruption of jealousy or uh, them going through your stalking your Facebook or something, you know, stuff like that. It's also Scorpio moon, also someone who's got the moon in the eighth house, these things can happen. So just, or someone who's got Pluto conjunct the sun or the moon, they'll also have these similar characteristics. Um, so they're intense emotionally, they can be temperamental, they can be. All the water signs can be kind of passive aggressive. Scorps less likely to pass be passive aggressive unless it's someone they really love and they don't want to hurt the relationship. And so they're in this double bind where they want to say something like they normally would in a business situation. Normally they'll just they're very quite aggressive. But in a interpersonal situation, they're they're sensitive to the partner, but then they're also mad at themselves for not saying something. They get resentful, and then it becomes this passive aggressive or silent treatment thing or control thing where they're trying to control the partner. Um, so it can get a little messy. Um, and the biggest issue the Scorpios have, all Scorps, they have they are so determined and focused on something, which is great, but they need to know when to let go and to stop okay you know I've got my my second daughter she, third child she's Scorpio and very Scorpio and uh, Libra everything else like all of her personal plans Libra but Scorpio's son and she is very loving but man when she has her mindset on something it's really hard to explain to her logically that no you can't have that bag of popsicles right now and she will sit and talk with you and try and convince you for 30 minutes that she should have that bag of popsicles that's Scorpio, okay? That's a, also Scorpio mixed with Libra. But she doesn't do it in the... My other daughter's Libra with all Scorp, and that energy is very different. She's also very determined, but she candy coats it. The Scorpio sun isn't going to candy coat it. They're going to care a lot about their interpersonal relationships with that a lot of Libra stuff, but the Scorpio on the outside makes them more aggressive and more, you know, like in your face with it, okay? And not quitting. They're like a pit bull. They don't let go. 
even a really sweet Scorpio, when they want something, they're very determined. Okay, so Scorpio and love, as we've been discussing, they're intense and focused. This definitely applies to their love relationships. They can be obsessive. They can many times, this is common with the Scorpio, when they fall for someone, they can have this unrequited love thing I was talking about. They fall really deeply, very quickly. Um, actually, not quickly. No. They fall very deeply, and it's something that really hits them in the middle, uh, and they may sense that they know something, that this is someone that's meant to be with them, that sort of thing. And they've got to be careful that what they're thinking that they're knowing, um, that it's not actually something else that's subconsciously brewing inside of them. Perhaps this person that they're falling for so deeply who's not requiting the affection, perhaps this person uh, simply holds uh, energy or, or behaves in a way that reflects their own inner whatever part of them that, that they feel like this person reflects, right? So you have a Scorpio that's more shy, who's attracted to someone who's really confident and bold, and I'm using a very simplistic uh, comparison, but, you know, so, so many times that Scorpios need to ask themselves, if the person's not requiting the feelings, what is it about this person that, that, that they carry that I lack, okay? And that, that, that can give you some insight in love. But that being said, uh, side note, Scorpios in love, they are, they have an intense sense that they should be in this partnership. If they're going to be in a partnership, they need to feel like this is meant to be, okay? Because there's a faded quality. There's this, it needs to have a sense that it's this contract they've made with one another and they're meant to be together. Also, very important to note, Scorpios, they are extreme. They want it all or they want nothing. They have a really hard time with the gray area in between. They'll walk it for a while if they love someone, but they're going to be really inner at least on the inside, pissed off that they're having to operate in this place where they're in this gray area that's meaningless to them. They want either all of it or none of it. Like, what's this gray area? What is this? This is not even anything. It's a, it's, it's fake, okay? They, they're they authentic to the extreme, all right? Scorpio expectations of love. Uh, let's think of the myth of Pluto, right? He took Persephone away down to the underworld. He took everything. Like, Scorpio wants everything. They want true love. They want body, heart, soul, mind. They want you, you know, if they want the thing, they want the thing, the, all of it. And there's a possessive quality to Scorpio. You know, even if you've got a Scorpio who's got, I know a Scorpio, I dated one, who's got Uranus conjunct his Scorpio sun. Okay, so we've got this freedom-loving energy conjunct a Scorpio sun sign. So expressed for him, he was someone who had multiple, you know, people he was seeing. Um, but I would say he was quite directed um, and he needed to be in a role where he was kind of in charge. That's would be sort of the Scorpio. He had to have that self-possession. And if he knew that you were seeing other people, he wouldn't really, um, he'd see you, but he wouldn't open himself up at all. It was all inward inside of him. So they're they will give you everything and they expect everything in return. They won't give you anything until they think that they're going to get everything kind of a little too, you know. So um, they're, they expect it all. They're an extreme sign. So Scorpio's biggest fear, when you have a sun sign, a zodiac sign, um, a personality, that is one of extremes. It's all or nothing. It's intense, and there's a focus there. They can focus that intensity and shine it like a laser on one person. Their fear is that they understand that they're deep. They understand that they're intense and that they're a lot. And their fear is that it's not going to be reciprocated and that it's maybe not even possible for it to be reciprocated, that they will walk the earth unrequited in their love and that they'll be solo travelers. Um, even in a relationship, like there's even that fear for Scorps, you know, that they get into a love relationship where it's, a committed relationship, but they feel like their partner's never quite in the same place that they're at, this life or death, I will die for you place. So they really need a partner who is as intense as they are, in my mind, who's grounded, but really intense and willing to intensely go to those places. Um, and it takes someone in my mind that has some strong Scorpio or some strong eighth house or some strong Pluto on their sun or their moon or their rising. Um, even their Venus maybe, but I would like to see it on luminaries because it's your personality. Like you got to be okay with some intense depth for it to work. So if you're interested, if you really want to find out about the compatibility between you and your partner, you need to have an astrology reading done with an astrologer. The, combat the computerized reports are really cool and you can order some great ones on astro.com. Um, they're great for giving you an initial sort of step into the compatibility between two people and learning about synastry, but there is nothing like an astrologer going over your charts because we look at first the individuals and we look at the synastry together, the chemistry between the two people, which is very complex. I mean, we're looking at 
hundreds of and hundreds of thousands of possible. I mean, really, there's probably millions of possibilities when we look at the synastry between two people. Um, but we are focusing it on you know these areas that are important and relative to romance and romantic compatibility, which a computer can't do. I mean, computers just databases of you know. Um, aspects between two people, right? An astrologer takes these aspects, the zodiac signs they're in, the houses that they're in, the sees all these patterns, this inner working, this mechanization of these two charts together, these two humans, these two blueprints, how they lock and key fit. And the astrologer is able to make some deductions that are much, much more enlightening than what you would see uh, from a computerized report. So computerized reports are great, they're a good place to start, but most of them cost like 40, 50 bucks. You can get a reading with an astrologer, it takes 90 minutes where you can record it and listen to it over and over again. 189 is what I charge for my relationship readings. If you're interested in that, give me a, an inbox. You can go to my website. You can actually book an appointment right on my website yourself, get it all taken care of without even having to message me first. I've got my schedule up there. So very easy and a lot of fun. You can do it via Skype or telephone or in person if you're here in Utah. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful for you and share with your friends. Subscribe to the channel if you like it. Uh, I try to get stuff up regularly because it's my passion to share astrology with as many people as possible. So thank you so much and uh, see you soon.